Hello, welcome to the free response problem of the day. So let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can figure this one out. This one's the 2011 number five. Um, so it says windmills generate electricity by transferring energy from wind to a turbine. A study was conducted to examine the relationship between wind velocity and miles per hour in electricity production in amperes for one particular windmill. For the windmill, measurements were taken on 25 randomly selected days and the computer output for the regression analysis for predicting electricity production based on wind velocity is given below. The regression model assumptions were checked and determined to be reasonable over the interval of wind speeds presented in the data, which were from 10 to 40 miles per hour. And so here's the computer printout. And uh, so then it says, use the computer print printout above output above to determine the equation of the least squared regression line identify all variables using the equation part b how much more electricity would the windmill be expected to produce on a day when the wind velocity is 25 miles per hour than a day when the wind velocity is 15 miles per hour show how you arrived at your answer part c uh, what proportion of the variation in electricity production is explained by its linear relationship with wind velocity? And then this part D is actually uh, content from chapter 12, which we did not do this year, and it's not a part of the AP Stats exam, so I'm not going to ask you to do that, even though I will show you the answer. But I want to add this part, and that is to interpret B and S in context, because that is something that could very well be and has been on the exam a lot. So... Um, Anyway, so if you want to pause the video and give this a give this a try, that would uh, that would be great. And so, and there is part E. So, okay. So let's talk. This is now you have to understand how to read these computer printouts. This is the most popular way that linear regression data is going to be presented to you. And so, what's happening here is you've got this. In in essence, the raw data, if you were to see it, would be two lists of numbers. And, and it would be paired data. You'd have a wind velocity and the amount of electricity that produced. And so you'd have a number of numbers, in this case, 25. So there's 25 pairs of numbers. And of course, we could put that, if we had it, we put it in list one and list two and do linear regression uh, with it, which we're going to have an example of that next week, probably, I'll, I'll post. But this is the most popular thing. And so this is the way you need to be able to read this. You need to realize, okay, this first number here, that's A. That is our y-intercept. Okay, and then this number right below it, that's B. That is our slope. These numbers that are next to A, we'll never use those. And we're not going to use these either. And These are chapter 12 stuff, so you won't need to know anything about that uh, this year, even though I'm going to chat about it briefly. Then, uh, And then we have S, and so that is the standard error about the line. And in other words, it is in essence the standard deviation of the residuals or the average of the residuals. And there's R squared. Um, and R squared adjusted, we will never use. So these are the four numbers you've got to be able to work with and you've got to be able to use uh, when you're given one of these computer printouts. And so part A, it says, determine the equation of the least squared regression line. Now it said identify the variables, but even if it didn't say that, you would be expected to do that. And so there's my A, there's my B, there's my y-intercept, and there's my slope. And so the equation of the least squared regression line is just that. It's just, and put a Y hat on it. This is predicted Ys. This isn't, this isn't um, actual Y values. And so we put a hat on things that are predictions. So it's Y hat is equal to, there it is, where X is the wind velocity in miles per hour and Y is the electricity production in amperes. So that's, that's it for part A. Then for part B, it just says, how much more electricity would the windmill be expected to produce on a day when the wind velocity is 25 miles per hour versus 15? So you can just plug in 25 and 15. Okay, so 25, uh, you just plug in 25 into our equation, and we would get 6.137 amperes. Then plug in 15, and you would get uh, you would get that. And so you subtract the two, and so that would be 2.4. That is what we're predicting. So um, the other way you could get this, by the way, is you could realize is that there's an increase of 10, and when there's an increase of 10, we're expecting, uh, in essence, to go up 10 slopes. You just multiply the slope by 10. So that's the other way you could have done this problem. But this was certainly the most popular way, just turn in, turn in 15 and 25. Then part C, you know, what proportion of the variation uh, in electricity production can be explained by the linear relationship with wind velocity? So in other, way, you know, in other words, what proportion of the change or the variation of the change in Y can be explained by the change in X, in essence? And that's what R squared is. So all you had to do is put what R squared is, which would be 0.873.
right there. So, um, and so of course that is just that thing right there. So that's, that's all there was to that. Now, by the way, part D deals with these numbers and is there convincing evidence of a relationship? Guess what that number is? That's a p-value. Okay, and there's our test statistic. That is, the, in essence, the number of standard errors are, that our sample value was from our hypothesized value. So, in other words, it's 12 standard errors away, which is huge. Okay, um, in other words, what this is sort of screaming at us, and this is really sort of the first thing I look at when I look at one of these printouts, it's screaming at us, whoa, there is a relationship between wind velocity and electricity, which certainly makes sense in regards to a windmill. And so... This, so that's the answer. Like I said, this isn't a part of this year's curriculum, but the null hypothesis of what we call linear regression t-test is that the slope is equal to zero, all right, which effectively means no relationship. The alternative is that there is a relationship, and, you know, because the p-value is zero, uh, we would reject the null and have convincing evidence. Uh, so that's in case you care about that, and that could come into play someday. I don't know, but not this year. All right, and so then, uh, and then the slope and S in context. So there's the slope, there's B, and there's S in context. And that now, that is very important in, to be able to say this year. The slope is the, the amount that we predict Y is going to go up if X goes up by 1. But we're not going to say X and Y, we're going to say the variable. So we would say, for each increase in wind velocity of 1 mile per hour, we predict, it's important to say that, we predict or we expect, um, the electricity production to go up by 0.24 amperes. So that is the way you say that. That is a very popular question on the AP Stats exam. I think there's a really good chance it'll be on there so that you need to be able to say that. And then S is the average amount of our predictions are going to be off in essence. And so predicted values of Y, predicted values of electricity production, using this model will be off by 0.237 amperes on average. And so that's what S is. And like I said, it is in essence... The, it's the standard deviation of the residuals, but since the residuals add up to, you know, average zero, it's in essence the average of the residuals. So, um, anyway, so there you go. There's your nice linear regression problem for the day. Appreciate you uh, stopping by and watching this video. So tomorrow we will, we will uh, crank up the, uh, the 2010 FRQs. So, anyway, but I uh, really miss seeing y'all, and uh, if you got any questions, please send them to me.